Hey, what's going on everyone? It's me, Marco from PhoneDog.com, and this massive, massive phone in my hand is the Oppo N1. It's also known as the Sanjin Mod phone. So as a Christmas Eve, you can buy an Oppo N1 running Sanjin Mod right out of the box in a special edition. But this one's actually Oppo's own Android 4.2 with color. It's Oppo's own user interface. This is basically an Android dream phone. It has the specs to back it up, plus just the insanity of the size of this phone. And this is all coming from a six year long user of the iPhone. So let's get into the full review of the Oppo N1 and find out why I like it so much. This phone is massive. I thought the Samsung Galaxy Note 3 was too big, but this phone measures in over 6 inches long and 3.5 and inches wide. Other than phones like the Lumia 1520 or the Samsung Galaxy Mega, this thing is in a class of its own. When you turn on the Oppo N1, you are taken in by this beautiful 5.9 inch full 1080p IPS display. It's one seriously beautiful display, neatly packed with 377 pixels per inch. It's not the highest pixel density in the world, but it looks really, really good. Watching videos on this phone is a serious joy. I never really enjoyed watching any type of videos on my phones, but this one is a very different experience. But looking at the display, you do notice how much bezel is actually present. You have this massive front and bottom chins full of bezel, and I can't help but say those could be smaller, but you'll see why these massive bezels are really important. The next thing you're really taken away by is the build quality. It's constructed like a tank, a good mix between metal and glass. The screen is made out of Gorilla Glass 3, and the whole body is basically one piece of aluminum. It definitely has some heft to it, and for a lot of people with smaller hands, it will feel like a very top-heavy device. The button placement for this ginormous phone is actually really good. Considering most people don't have giant hands, we have placed the power button and the volume rocker on the bottom half of the phone. It's really natural and very easy to get to. Oppo has also added something called the O-Touch. It's on the back and it's a small, touch-sensitive one-inch square that basically acts like a trackpad. You can swipe through home screens, scroll through the web pages, and even control your camera shutter. I find myself not using it very often. One main reason is because it doesn't really work that well. It's really sensitive when it comes to determining a touch or an accidental touch, and the placement is very close to the camera. It feels like the same mistake as on the HTC One Max with their awkwardly placed fingerprint reader. Now the specs of this massive phone are pretty good. It's running a quad-core 1.7GHz Qualcomm Snapdragon 600, 2GB of RAM, and an Adreno 320 graphics processor. Internally, you'll either find 16 or 32GB of built-in storage with no option to expand the memory. To run this phone is a massive 3610mAh battery. I've been using this phone all day and it still basically has a full battery. That's seriously impressive. I've had about 8 hours of on-screen time with over 60% of battery still available the next morning. This is a phone that you could really forget your charger and not worry about it. The camera is a 13 megapixel sensor that takes really good photos and 1080p video, but notice there's no front-facing camera. Just kidding. One of the largest hypes about this phone is this party piece flippable camera. Not only is it your high quality rear facing camera, but it takes that 13 megapixel sensor and shines it for a 13 megapixel glorified selfie camera. This will make any Facebook or Twitter fanatic very happy with all the selfies they do. The camera is actually really good. Especially in good lighting, the image is really sharp and that's partially due down to the glass views for the optics and the large f2 aperture. Bringing down the light isn't the best thing for the camera and also using the LED flash for photos can really mess up your color balance. The photos are very clear and sharp throughout. It's one of the better Android cameras but not the best. Especially with phones like the Lumia 1520, it's nowhere close. The 13 megapixel front facing camera is super clean. I was using Skype for a video call and my image was very clean. I think it's also worth a mention that you will no longer need to use the button to switch your cameras since this manually switches. Part of what makes this phone so great is the ability to install CyanogenMod. It's basically an open source project based on Android, but it's super flexible when it comes to all the features a user can add to it. It's basically the easy way of becoming an open source user on Android rather than sticking with Android in a skin. And as of December 24th, 2013, Google will be selling a right out of the box Oppo N1 running CyanogenMod since Google has approved CyanogenMod, a very good plus. But this model is running Android 4.0 2.2 with color, Oppo skin for Android. It's a more refined version of the same software we found on the Oppo Find 5. 
ColorOS is a simple skin that adds a few more customizations to Android, especially when it comes down to themes. You can change the whole look and feel by changing the theme. And one added option is the gesture drawing tool where the notifications panel is. You can add drawable shapes to launch applications or do certain tasks. The whole OS is full of smooth motions and it makes that experience that much better. And even with a slightly slower processor, the phone still delivered very good performance. And in my week of testing, I never found the situation where the phone couldn't handle the task at hand. It was a very solid performer. Now, after all of these great things about the N1, I do have to bring it back down to earth. For one, the Oppo N1 does not have LTE. Live in the United States and really enjoying your super fast AT&T LTE? Too bad. HSDPA Plus will be your only option. That's a real downside since LTE is basically a standard now and all the networks are up and running. But this Oppo N1 is an Android dream right out of the box. And even those who buy an Oppo N1 with color can install Cyanjin Mod in a matter of minutes. It's extremely developer friendly and Oppo themselves even want you to do it. It's written right on their website. The ability to run Cyanjin Mod is a great plus and with a special edition launching on December 24th, it makes it all the better. It may have its quirks and it definitely has one single core audience, either people who like really big phones or those who want Cyanjin Mod. It's definitely one of my more favorite phones for 2013. So thanks for watching, make sure to stay tuned to our YouTube channel here for much more content and hit that subscribe button and the like button if you already haven't. But for now, my name is Marco Hanna and I'll see you guys in the next video.